Welcome back to our module on statics. What I'd like to um, spend a little bit of time today is talking about vectors in three dimensions. I want to tell you something first about um, when I was growing up, oops, when, I, when I was growing up, our next door neighbor was a ham operator. And so what he had is he had this really, you know, just this huge tower. I mean, it must have been like, I don't know, like 60 feet, something like that. And, um, you know, it was pretty impressive. We'd go over, and sometimes he'd he'd allow us to, to come by and, you know, see the people, or hear him, you know, talk with people from Australia and things like that. It was, it was pretty neat. And um, outside, he had these guy wires. They were attached to the ground uh, through these, I, I can't quite remember, let's pretend they're stakes. I'm sure they're in, like, concrete or something, I'm not sure. But um, let's say that... Um, we're going to try and figure out, or let's pretend we, we look at the this this wire right here and find out that there's a thousand pounds of tension in it holding it up. We're just going to look at this one. And we're wondering, well, what's happening here? What's happening at, um, at the stake? Like, is it in which directions is it pulling? How's that working? What, what's going on? Now, in order to make this work, we're going to take all the same, in order to figure this out, we're going to take all the same rules we already know about two dimensions, all our vectors, how they add, and we're going to apply them in three dimensions. I'd like to spend some time doing it simply because walking our way through it, there are a couple of pitfalls we want to avoid. So I'd like to talk our way through it. Now, before we get started, let's remember our X, Y, and Z axes. X, when it comes time to putting it in vector notation, I'll refer to as I y, j, z will be referred to as k. And um, let's take a look at where, we're just going to look at this stake right here, okay? And let's say, you know, in the x direction it comes out here, and like this, and I'll put these distances so you can see them. Let's say in the x direction it's, I don't know, 50 feet. That, that seems a little high. Let's, uh, I remember it being like um, 20 feet. We'll say this is 20 feet. Okay. And the y direction is going to be 5 feet. And in the z direction, the height there is, uh, let's say, 40 feet. Okay. So with these numbers, my question we're going to figure out is what's happening here. Let's take a look at. Um, this area. Let's draw our free body diagram. All right, so here's the stake. And we know that there's some uh, mystery force, and we're not going to get into what this force is. Uh, we know that there's some mystery force. We'll call it force G. This is the force that the ground is applying to keep this thing from f pulling out. But we do know that the force from the ground is equal and opposite to everything here. So when the time finally comes, we're going to know what that force is by looking at what's happening in the cable. So first, you have the force. Let's, let's, let's try and make that as parallel as possible. We just call that force. That is the uh, force due to the tension. And it's going to have a uh, x component. It's going to have a um, z component. And it's going to have a y component. So from there, we can see what that force is. And our goal is to figure out what those x, y, and z components are. Now we're going to use a really simple rule. I know that this is intention, okay? If I know it's intention, I know the force is directed along the wire. If the force is directed along the wire, the direction of the wire is exactly the direction of the force. If the force is along the wire, the direction of the wire is exactly the direction of the force. Which means if we set up a 
distance, let's say in the x direction, if we want to know what proportion of the, uh, the, the direction of the wire is going in the x direction, we're going to take the distance in the x direction divided by the total distance. That's going to be the full wire. And that's going to be the same, that's going to be the same ratio as the force in the x direction divided by the force total. So in other words, if I have a wire that's facing mostly horizontally, that means most of my force is going to be in that direction. And as a matter of fact, since my force goes along the wire, the direction of the force is exactly the same as the direction of the wire. So the proportion going in the x direction is the same as the proportion of the force going in the x direction. The proportion of the distance in the x direction is the same as the force in the x direction. Now the starting place, so, so we can find out the distance in the x direction, right? That is, uh, that's simply um, 20 feet. And what else do we know? We know the tension, the total tension is a thousand pounds. And we want to know what it, we want to know what the force in the x direction is. So that's an unknown. So the only thing remaining is this variable. We need to find out the total distance of this wire. In order to do that, we use the Pythagorean theorem. And that works in three dimensions as well. So we have 5 squared plus 20 squared plus 40 squared. And uh, give me, go ahead and calculate this out if you want. I'm going to write down the results. Let's move this down, write down the results right now. Here you go. We find that the distance, total distance, right here is 45 feet. So let's put this down here, 45 feet. Now we know that the force in the x direction is simply 20 feet times 1,000 pounds divided by 45. Plug that into your calculator and get 444 pounds. So now we know that the force in the x direction is 444 pounds. Now one of the neat ways, uh, one, one of the advantages of doing this um, is we also know we can do the same thing in the y direction. So we have a choice. We can say distance in the y direction over distance total equals force in the y direction over force total. Okay. And um, if we do it this way, it's going to be all the same, you know, basically the same thing. Let's, let's change to this color, which is what I use for Y. It's going to be simply 40 over 45 equals force Y over force total 1000. And from that, we can do force of Y equals 889. You know, we could do it that way. Another neat thing about this is um, the other way we can do this is l let's take a look at what's happening here. We know that the vertical distance is twice as much as the horizontal distance, which means the force in the vertical direction is twice as much as the force in the horizontal. And look at this, 444, multiply that. 889. Well, I mean, there's rounding issues there. That said, we also know that uh, using that logic, we can look at our force in the z direction. Force in the z direction is one quarter the force in the x direction because the distance is one quarter. So we get 111 pounds. Okay. Now this way, we can use this technique to find out the force in all three dimensions. I'd like to point out two further things that we can learn from this. The first is the, uh, the vertical force is 889 pounds, okay? So what does that mean? That is 
the force pulling that stick straight up. The horizontal force, which is kind of like pulling that stick sideways, is a combination of these two, 444 pounds in the X direction, 111 pounds in the Z direction. And we can combine those using the Pythagorean theorem because we don't care, you know, which one's in the X and Z direction. And if we do that, we find that um, the total, f well, let's let, we find that the total force, let's call that um, force horizontal, is 458 pounds. Go ahead and run through that if you need to. Uh, you're just going to use the Pythagorean theorem of 111 squared plus 440 squared and take the square root. And the force vertical is 889 pounds. So that's, that's a nice little calculation we can do to make this actually useful. The second way, or the, the second thing we can learn from this is let's take a look at the angle. All right. Now, we could, um, let's see. We could find the angle by taking a look at um, the distances. We can also do it in the forces. So let's imagine that we make this axis parallel, or this line parallel to the x-axis, okay? And this is our line. We want to know, let's find a different color for this, maybe orange. We want to know the angle between these two. So we, we can call this angle, let's put it up here, we can call this angle theta x because it's the angle that this wire makes with the x-axis or something parallel to the x-axis. Um, and the way we do that is we simply take um, the inverse cosine of, whoops, inverse cosine of the horizontal component, which is f of x, and f of x is 444. And we divide it by the total of 1,000 pounds. You could also, if you wanted to, you could also do it with distance. Because remember, they're the same angle. They're the same amount. And we know that the horizontal component is 20, and the total component is, uh, what, what did we say the total distance was? 45. Now we can plug those numbers in and we get the same answer. 63.6 degrees. Okay, you can do the same thing with Y and with Z. I do want to make one, um, one further note. When you measure this angle right here, that is not the same as looking, that is not the same as the angle that you would see if you were looking along the z-axis. Um, that's a little confusing. Think about it some more. Um, if I get enough requests, I can show you why this is not the same. But for right now, just be clear that it's the force of x divided by the entire force. Next uh, session, we're going to jump into a truly three-dimensional problem and see what we can do. I look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye.